In this video, we're going to look at um, something called the ion product, and we're going to ask the question, will a precipitate form? So um, going back to our analog of chapter 14, we can um, make predictions about the direction of a reaction. Will a reaction go to the left? Will a reaction go to the right? Or will there be no effect if um, using this thing called Q, which was the um, the equilibrium it's basically it takes the same form as an equilibrium constant but is uh, concentrations that may or may not be at equilibrium so for um, for KSP we have what's called the ion product um, and that's QSP and it takes the same form as KSP but may not be at equilibrium concentrations Okay, so for example, um, for silver chloride, uh, if this were to dissolve, we would get silver ion and chloride ion in solution. And we know that KSP is equal to uh, the silver plus concentration times the chloride minus concentration. This would have E's on the bottom, right? So KSP requires that we have equilibrium concentrations for um, equilibrium concentrations in there for it to be a, K a KSP. So Q, on the other hand, takes the same form, uh, QSP. Uh, however, the concentrations don't get that little e. This could be a concentration at any given particular point. Um, it could be before we reach equilibrium. It could be where our concentrations are too large for equilibrium. So then we can c compare Q with K to make predictions about what's going to happen. So let's look at some possibilities. Um, so let's look at the possibility where QSP is greater than KSP. So if this is the case, that means this means that the concentration of the ions is higher than the concentration that should be at equilibrium, right? So if Q is large um, and Q is greater than KSP, that tells us that we have too many ions in the solution. So what's going to happen here is we're going to shift to the left and we get a precipitate. So um, this thing is going to shift to the left to reduce those concentrations and some silver chloride is going to come out of the solution. So if QSP is equal to KSP, then the concentration of the ions is equal to the concentration at equilibrium. And the consequence here is that we're at saturation. So basically nothing happens. The, the, the concentrations are exactly what they're supposed to be um, according to KSP. So we basically are saying that we have equilibrium values of the concentrations. And then if QSP is less than KSP, then the concentration of ions is less than the equilibrium concentration. So at this point, we're at, um, we're at um, unsaturated levels. So um, in theory, the solution, so then the question becomes if we have a solid or not. So if there's a solid, um, it'll dissolve, right? So if there's some solid present and um, it can dissolve, it will dissolve. If there's no solid, Well, then nothing can happen, so uh, basically nothing happens, right? So if you have solid, the solid will dissolve until we get to Q equals KSP. If there is no solid, meaning we just don't have enough solid around, then nothing happens. You just have an unsaturated solution of your ions. Um, so this gives you a little introduction. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to look at two different things. We're going to look at a concept question. Um, basically, it's going to take us through all of this uh, for um, Q and KSP in, in, in a concept form. Then we're going to look at an actual calculation. This concept question is going to help you understand how to use the ion product um, from a conceptual standpoint, not necessarily from a quantitative standpoint yet, but from a conceptual standpoint. So this is that a solution is prepared by adding excess silver chromate to pure water. For each condition below, predictive Q will be greater than, less than, or equal to K. Predict if the salt will dissolve or if the salt will precipitate. Okay, so here we go. So the moment the salt is added to the water. So you can kind of think of this um, at, as 
like we can kind of start to apply this to the ice table, uh, the idea, right? So the moment the salt is added to the water, well, nothing has happened yet. So our concentration of the salt, in this case, the silver and the chromium, is going to be zero molar and zero molar. So the only thing that the salt can do is dissolve at this point. So it's got to be that Q is less than K, uh, QSP is less than KSP, um, because we haven't dissolved anything yet. We just put the salt in. So the concentrations have to start to come up um, in order for us to even get close to the KSP. So the salt will dissolve at this point. Okay, so now the solution is allowed to sit for several hours after adding the salt to the water. So what's happening now is as uh, the sit for several hours is key. So what's happening is is the, uh, the silver chromate is um, having a is having time to dissolve. So um, over several hours, this thing is going to start to dissolve. And what's going to happen is, is the concentration uh, is going to come up until it equals the KSP, right? So we're going to become saturated. Um, and so, uh, as, as we get to this point, this, the salt is now going to be sitting there. It's going to be saturated. Q is going to equal KSP. So um, nothing is going to be happening at this point. We're going to be in equilibrium. Okay, so now here are the interesting ones. So let's think about this. So we have our solution now, and it's sitting there, and we have some uh, silver chromate at the bottom. So we have our uh, aqueous phase, and then we have our solid phase. And then what we do is we pour off the aqueous phase into a beaker. And the question is, um, this is the aqueous phase, and we have no solid left. If the solution is poured off and separated from the salt, i.e. you have the solution but no salt, what is the condition that you have? Well, let's think about this, right? So over here, we just said that in this solution, in this aqueous solution, Q was equal to KSP. Um, so if Q is equal to KSP and we pour it off and nothing else happens, then once it's poured off, Q is going to still be equal to KSP, right? N nothing has changed. Um, our, the, 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 the concentration of, of ions in that solution was whatever it was going to be. We pour it off and the concentration is still going to be at KSP. So in this case, Q is still equal to KSP and we're saturated. So, um, uh, and we're, we're, we're saturated. We're not in equilibrium though anymore. Um, the reason why we're not in equilibrium is because we have no salt. So we're at the saturation point. So we're saturated. Q is equal to KSP, but we're not in equilibrium because we don't have the salt. Okay, so now let's look at this. So then a small quantity of sodium chromate is added to the solution. So this is an interesting one. So now what we're doing is, is we've got our aqueous solution here. Um, and this, has got, uh, this is our aqueous solution of silver chromate that we poured off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to throw in some chromate. So we have to remember that Q in this case is equal to the silver plus squared times the concentration of CrO4 2 minus. So when we add the uh, sodium chromate, what we're doing is we're increasing the concentration of the CrO4 2 minus. So we have a common ion effect. What this is going to do is this is going to cause Q to become greater than KSP because now we have more chromate than we should and we're going to get a precipitate. So those ions are going to precipitate out of the solution and we're going to start to form some solid at the bottom. So this allows you to kind of track through and think about some different concepts before we even start doing the math, because it's very easy to get lost in the weeds with the math um, in these types of problems. So in this final problem, we're going to do a quantitative calculation with Q and KSP. Um, I would recommend looking at the practice problems of these in the textbook because um, there's a lot of different ways we can ask it, and this is only one example. But this pretty much throws the whole kitchen sink of uh, things that we would could potentially do uh, in a problem like this.
Okay, so it says the concentration of chloride ions in tap water is 20 mill milligrams per liter. Predict if a precipitate will form if 15 mils of a 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar silver nitrate solution is added to 100 mils of tap water. Uh, the KSP for AGCL is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. So let's just kind of get our feet on the ground here and draw a picture. So what we've got is we've got 100 mils of tap water. And that's got 20 mgs of Cl minus per liter. And then to this, we're adding 15 mils of a 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar silver plus solution. So now the reason why I can write silver plus is because this is soluble. Silver nitrate is a soluble compound. So it's going to quantitatively break up into silver and nitrate. So we can say that um, if it's 15 mils and the concentration of the silver is going to be exactly 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 because it's soluble. So what we have to do in this problem is we have to establish whether a precipitate will form. So that's the key. Predict if a precipitate will form, you're automatically knowing you're doing Q. Um, so if we write our Q in this case, so the reaction is silver chloride goes back and forth with silver plus plus Cl minus aqueous. We always write it as though it's dissolving. So Q is going to be the concentration of silver plus times the concentration of silver minus as it sits. So now keep in mind that when this whole thing is finished, what we have is we have 115 mils of liquid and we just put two things into it, right? We've added 15 to 100. So we're going to definitely have to do some dilution calculations and whatever to get or whatever else we have to do to get those concentrations. And remember, these are the concentrations in the 115 mils. So we got to see do those are those concentrations going to give us a Q that's greater than, less than or equal to KSP. So now let's start to wrap ourselves let's start to wrap our brains around the dilution calculations. So if we took 15 mils of a 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar solution, and then we um, bring that up to a total volume of 115 mils, we can use M1V1 equals M2V2 to do that. This is a dilution problem. So if we take 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar times 15 mils, that's going to equal um, X, which is um, the volume, the concentration, times the new volume, which is 115 mils. So if you solve for X, the new concentration is going to be 1.44 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. And now we have to tackle the, co the concentration of the chloride ions. So the first thing we have to do is we have to convert that 20 milligrams per liter into something we can use, which is a concentration. So um, we're going to first convert the milligrams. So we're going to say that for every 1,000 milligrams, we have one gram. And then to get this into moles, we're going to say that for every 35.45 grams, we looked that up from the periodic table, we have one mole of chloride. So this stoichiometry is going to allow us to go from mg per liter into moles per liter, which is molarity. We need molarity because these concentrations are in molarity. Okay, so that gives us 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of Cl minus per liter. Now again, we have to do a dilution problem where we have 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4 molar times 100 mils is going to equal x times 115 mils. So if you solve for x from that problem, you get 4.87 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. So if we plug these two values in for, in our Q equation, Q is going to equal 1.44 times 10 to the minus 5 molar times uh, 4.87 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. We're going to get a Q value equal to 6.99 times 10 to the minus 9. So we're going to compare that. Uh, the KSP in this case is going to equal is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. I get that from here. So in this case, Q is greater than the KSP, 10 to the minus 9 versus 10 to the minus 10. So a precipitate will form. Um, because the Q is greater than the KSP. So you can kind of see the types of things that we're going to throw at you. Um, there could be dilution problem parts to the problem. 
um, there could be doing some uh, conversion of units of concentration and then a dilution parts of the problem. Um, but in the end, the, the key thing is that you have to get the molar concentrations of all of the ions that are present in the salt in whatever volume of solution you have. So if you mix two things together, you have to account for the fact that the volume is going to be the combined volume of those two things. If you can, if you can handle all of the, the beginning stuff, then um, this part is quite easy. It's just getting to this part that could be a little tough.